just sat down in this uh, Renault Zoe and it's really interesting, it's the final car of the four cars that I've been testing and uh, this car is the one with the large battery, the 40 kilowatt hour system so um, I just reset the computer here and um, so yeah it's in Swedish now maybe I should have um, turned it into English but anyway you have the uh, average speed here the total consumption saved energy I don't know what that is but the interesting part here is the average consumption in kilowatt hour per hundred kilometers uh, so that's what we will be looking at later and uh, we also have over here uh, I just reset the trip meter as well so we're at zero kilometers now and we haven't used any uh, energy so far and the computer tells me that I have 292 kilometers of range right now uh, we're not going to have that range when we start driving fast because as Björn Uland would have said I drive like I stole the car the trip I took was from the center of Stockholm to Eskilstuna uh, total distance of 118 kilometers So we've been driving now for 13 kilometers and used 2 kilowatt hour of, uh, of energy and uh, the average consumption here is ticking down we're currently at 21.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers so it's actually going up now and that's uh, because I'm driving a little bit faster right now I'm driving at a little bit more than 100 kilometers per hour uh, let's say 65 miles per hour and uh, it's a nice car I think it's it's a kind of small car but it feels uh, pretty large so uh, yeah it's a nice experience it uses more or less around 20 percent more of energy than the Ionic, I would say. Uh, but the battery is more than 20% larger, so probably the range will be better in this car than in the Ionic. We'll see. We just passed Södertälje, and that means I just accelerated up to 125 km per hour. And uh, up until now, we've been using 21.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So uh, it's actually uh, pretty decent, pretty good uh, energy consumption. It's better than Nissan Leaf, uh, better than BMW i3, uh, I, I'd say as well. Not as good as the Ioni. When we come to Eskilstuna, uh, we'll probably have a little bit higher since we're driving faster now. Uh, but how much? Well, only time can tell. We just arrived at the fast charging station in Eskilstuna and uh, we used an average energy of 22.9 kWh per 100 km. It's actually pretty good I think. I thought that it would be somewhere around 25 to 26 kWh uh, but it was lower so that's good. Uh, so you can see here at the screen uh, 22.9 kWh per 100 km. We had an average speed of 87 km per hour. Actually, for the most part of the trip, uh, we, have, we had an average speed of maybe 110 km per hour. But uh, in the beginning, we were driving really slowly, so, uh, and it's also ticking down now since we stopped. So, uh, yeah, we, we were driving fast. We were driving at 100 km per hour for at least 40 km and then 70 km uh, at around 120 km per hour. We've been driving 115 km and uh, according to the screen here we have 65 km left. So that is 180 km. Uh, and that's good, I think. Uh, when driving at these speeds, uh, we have around um, 2 degrees centigrade outside. And uh, just now it started raining a little bit, but up until now we've had dry roads. So really similar conditions as with the BMW i3 and the Hyundai Ioniq. And um, yeah, range-wise, this car is the winner. 180 kilometers. Uh, that's good. So, I'm sitting here driving, and my girlfriend is behind the camera, is making me laugh. Anyway, we're on our way home, um, I'm driving a bit slower now, uh, right now the speedometer is 
showing 107 km per hour and that's uh, actually 103 or something like that. I'm cruising behind some kind of uh, car with a trailer, uh, so it helps with the drag a little bit. We had a little bit of uh, rain as well earlier, actually, pretty much. But uh, yeah, we're driving around 100 km per hour and we're having uh, an average consumption of 19.3 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So that means we have around uh, 220 to 210, I don't know, something like that, kilometers of range uh, on a full battery when driving like this. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, and especially since it's been raining as well. Uh, the, the charge is really slow. We charged at 45 minutes uh, at uh, Eskilstuna. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're driving a little bit extra echo friendly on our way home because we didn't charge uh, that long. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's possible to drive uh, pretty energy efficient in this car as well. We are back home. We had an average energy of 17.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers, and we drove fairly careful. Uh, so we have an average speed of around 80 kilometers per hour. And uh, as we can see here, we have used 20 kilowatt hour, uh, and we drove 415 kilometers. Um, right there, you can see uh, the consumption and the average speed. Yeah, you can see the total consumption there as well, 20 kilowatt hour. We have 35 kilometers left right now. So, actually I don't know how many percent that is, but uh, it's not much. I can tell you that, because it's... You see the bars here, only one bar left. And I'm going to drive another 15 kilometers tomorrow. But uh, hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, pretty satisfied with this car. It's a nice car, but uh, not really suitable for long-range driving. I have a little bit of aching in my butt, and uh, you have to drive pretty carefully. You have to just use small movements uh, when you're steering. So um, it's uh, it's not that like an Ionic who has like self-steering and uh, adaptive cruise control. Um, but still, it's a, it's a nice city car and also good for longer range driving since it has uh, yeah, good range. But um, the charging speed is really bad. We charged from 35% uh, up to 65% and we waited for 40-45 minutes, something like that. We had an average charging speed of 20-21 kilowatt. Uh, when I charged uh, the Ionic, we had an average speed of uh, 48. So uh, this this one charges less than half as fast. And if you charge the Ionic at a 100 kilowatt charger, you'll get 70 kilowatts. And uh, as far as I know, they're installing lots of those right now across Europe. So uh, this car definitely needs an uh, an updated charger. But even if it had an updated charger, I think I'd still use uh, um, use the, the Ionic for long range. Or I'd, if, if I would buy a car, I would buy the Ionic, since I mostly drive long range. Um, but still an impressive car, good range. With uh, this consumption, we would have had something around 20-30 kilometers of range. So uh, yeah, really good car. So here we have it all the results of the test drive that I've been taking. The first test drive with the Nissan LEAF wasn't actually a real test drive. I've been driving the LEAF a lot, so the 100 kilometers is just an approximation of what I think that the car would do at these conditions. But the other three is actually real world uh, test driving at similar conditions. You have them all here in my channel. So when you're driving at 70 miles per hour, 112 kilometers per hour, zero degrees centigrade and almost dry road you get 120 kilometers of driving with the BMW the Ionic will take you 155 kilometers and the winner range wise is the Zoe that takes you 185 kilometers on one charge if I would choose a car to buy I would choose the Ionic 
It's a bigger car that behaves better on the road at high speeds and I drive a lot of long distance driving so I would choose the Ionic. And not only that, the Ionic as I said charges a lot faster. Uh, but it still doesn't have the really good range that I would like to have. So what else can I test drive if we look ahead? Well we have the uh, Volkswagen Golf with the upgraded battery. The most important cars um, ahead of us now is the Opel Ampera E that will go around 300 kilometers at these conditions. And we also have the uh, Tesla Model 3. So if you liked the video, please hit that like button. And uh, if you wanna see more test drives from me further on, uh, please subscribe and um, I'll be back soon with more interesting numbers and test drives for you to take a look at.